if you have spent any length of time being around MMA culture, you will sometimes see upward blocks as they are done in many traditional martial arts being mocked as impractical. Despite this, when you look towards professional boxing as the highest standard of both punch offense and punch defense, you can find upward blocks being used as an effective defensive technique. So in short, if upward blocks have been used in combat sports, you would have to say that they are a legitimate technique. Although there are reasons to argue against their use, especially the way in which they are trained in many traditional martial arts. There are many cases that you can look at to get a sense of realistic blocking in martial arts. One case that I'm going to focus on here is the case of Manny Pacquiao v Eric Morales. In this fight, the guard of Eric Morales was singled out as a significant tactical weakness which was going to be exploited by Manny Pacquiao. Uh, the way that Morales is holding his right hand is that's almost perfect for Pacquiao's favorite punch, which is a straight left right through the center. Because Morales is holding the right hand to the side of his head. To the side of his head. And, rather and, than and, so as you look at the guard of Eric Morales, you can see that in his habitual position, his right hand is very subtly wide of his head. Yet despite him only needing to move his right hand an inch or two to block or parry the Pacquiao left hand, he is unable to do this. So when you see how upward blocks are sometimes interpreted in traditional martial arts, by comparison it doesn't seem realistic to think there would be time to react to an attack and then lift your arm 5 to 6 inches overhead. A harsh critic could say this inability of Morales to block a punch that would only require an inch of movement implies a degree of ineptitude on his part. To play devil's advocate for a second to entertain this argument, I believe this would be hugely illogical. For instance, by Morales' own words, he grew up in a boxing gym. He reached the summit of a sport practiced by hundreds of millions, earning huge financial rewards in the process. Realistically, it would be more realistic to see him as a one in a million incredibly skilled practitioner rather than an incompetent. One exponent of the upward block that shows it can be a legitimate technique is Gene Fulmer. Fulmer competed at the highest levels of boxing, becoming a world middleweight champion. He also holds a winning record against Sugar Ray Robinson, who many will recognize as a name that often comes up in connection with the greatest boxer of all time conversation. One thing that you will notice about Fulmer's style is that although he would use the upward block mainly with the lead hand as a defensive technique on the outside, he would also sometimes assume the position of the upward block and charge into the clinch. In Fulmer's era, a boxing match could be considered to be a closer representation of a real fight as referees were more likely to let wrestling and the clinch go. You can see that in some of the clips, Fulmer is given the opportunity to work extensively in the clinch. In terms of applying the upward block to MMA, the way Fulmer is using it seems to be valid. As if other grappling skills were trained, the upward block would surely make it difficult for the opponent to secure collar ties or a tie plum. The reason that Fulmer is able to make use of the upward block is very likely because his arms are in that position anyway. Much like Morales' successful defense of straight left hands depended on his ability to move his right hand an inch or two centrally, Fulmer's defense involves very limited movement with his arms. One issue with this is that Fulmer's arms were in an awkward position to throw conventional boxing punches, such as a 1-2. Because of this, Fulmer would sometimes lead with a hammer fist style jab, which he would follow with an overhand right. You can pretty much see in the clips that the momentum of these two punches would flow. Two other fighters who also made use of the upward block, although you could call it a cross guard, are Archie Moore and George Foreman in a second career where he competed from his late 30s until his late 40s, becoming the oldest heavyweight champion. Archie Moore was also one of the oldest champions in the sport of boxing, and it was with him who George Foreman spoke before launching his comeback. Moore was also a trainer to Foreman in part during his comeback. Unlike Foreman, who got a lot of work done inside, Foreman and Moore operated at mid-range. Foreman was probably the best fighter at making use of blocks and parries ever in the heavyweight division. 
Moore relied more on head movement, blocking occasionally. Both Moore and Foreman were effective at landing looping punches, which caused brutal knockouts. Two other boxers who have been known to use upward blocks slash crossguard style movements are firstly Ken Norton, who used a diagonal style upward block as part of his defense. Also former heavyweight champion Tim Witherspoon. Like others, Witherspoon would use a diagonal style upward block as well as occasionally using an upward block at a nice symmetrical right angle or blocking upwards with two hands at once. The nice symmetrical right angle with a spoon created when blocking would likely give him more points at a form demonstration. With a spoon also occasionally used the forearm for dirty boxing. The final boxer I'm going to focus on here is Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather's fight with Ricky Hatton in many ways shows how modern boxing has diverged from something representative of a real fight between two punch specialists into a very niche sport. On many occasions, Mayweather would initiate clinches only for Hatton to be warned. This obviously heavily reduced Hatton's ability to work on the inside the way Fulmer would have been able to. At one stage, Mayweather intentionally turned his back, with Hatton being deducted a point for striking the back of the head. While striking the back of the head is dangerous and justifiably illegal, the idea of Mayweather intentionally turning his back is nonsensical for obvious reasons. You could also say the fight potentially highlighted some degree of corruption when it comes to refereeing in Las Vegas. Whilst Hatton's activity on the inside was stifled, Mayweather did have success with dirty boxing empires, framing with his forearm in a very upward block style position and using it to set up punches. Framing with his forearm and using it to set up punches is something Mayweather has also done in other fights. Upward block style positions have also historically been used in Muay Thai for both blocking and framing, though they are somewhat rare. So in conclusion, the way upward blocks are often presented in traditional martial arts often overestimates the human reflex. The idea that a defender will have enough time to see a strike coming and guide it over their head is a severely low percentage scenario. There is evidence, however, that upward blocks can be effective if you have your arms ready in those positions. Probably the best use of upward blocking is its use for framing and setting up punches and elbows in the clinch, either as it was used historically in boxing or in a sport like MMA where posting on one leg to throw a knee is a precarious position.